Hi, it's your humble Pisces Diana at Slow Gaze. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I am so excited to be filming this because I am a gloss lover. I'm going to be going into an in-depth review of them today. I'm very new to YouTube and I just wanted to put content out there that I would search for myself. And this is one of the top things that I've always been interested in. Let's dive in. Okay, <laughs> let's be real. This is what happens. This is what happens in real life. My phone decided to not film the main chunk of this video. So here I am again, looking completely crazy. Hi, didn't plan on filming, but here we are. So <laughs> yeah, I am wearing my favorite Goodwill tie-dye t-shirt, but let's roll with this, huh? I'm gonna switch back from me in this getup to me and the leopard and we'll just go back and forth. And I will get you all the good good, I will tell you all the things and still do this review for you. Sound okay? Thank you for going with me in this chaos. I used to be such a liquid matte lipstick person. I was gonna say girl, but I'm not a girl. I'm 30 years old. <laughs> and one day this Glossier lip gloss stalked into my life and decided to change my entire life. I was wearing a full face of makeup every single day in college. And then I decided to, you know, try to lighten up the load, but I didn't feel good about my acne scarring and the way that my blemishes were coming through. And then I discovered Glossier, like the rest of the millennials in the early 2000s. I bought their face wash, I bought into their whole brand and the whole like less makeup, makeup, skincare first. And that was actually revolutionary to me. It was the first time I had never worn a full base of foundation. It was the first time I religiously used one cleanser that was not stripping. It didn't feel like my skin was just like, like a marble bust. And that was amazing. Like I could go out and feel like I was a normal person. And so that to me is a huge reason why I also went into clear glosses. I just felt like I could celebrate and add shine or play with light or, you know, maybe just a little pigment to my brows. I stopped filling in my brows, which also was a everyday daily chore and I put maybe just a little bit of their like cloud haze um, on my cheeks and I just felt like a flushed newborn baby. It was amazing. So that was maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, I just wanted to share that story because we're passionate about makeup here, we're passionate about skincare maybe and definitely lip glosses. So I have a whole spreadsheet. So if I glance over to the side of the screen, it's because I'm referencing that. I want to order this from most product to least product. It's not gonna be by value. It's not gonna be like price per ounce. You still have to decide whether or not you're gonna pay $18 for a tube of lip gloss. And I know these aren't drugstore, but I will do hopefully like more parts to the series. These just happen to be glosses that I know and love from my collection. I'm gonna describe the applicator, the component, the packaging. I'll tell you the scent as best I can. I know that's very subjective. I'll be sure to tell you if there's any pigment in it shimmer, how it wears throughout the day, if it settles into fine lines or if it smooths over, how it feels, the viscosity of it, maybe go into the ingredients just a little bit sort of based on their own claims, the brand's claims, and then whether or not it is made in USA or Canada or Italy, I think those are the three main locales, and if I could find out whether or not it was clean or vegan, also cruelty free. That's a status that changes regularly for different brands. So again, I'm filming in July of 2020. Please do your research and check out if the brand that you know and love, if they still are cruelty free status or if they jumped onto that wagon. So let's dive in. First product up here is the Marc Jacobs Hydrating Lip Oil in Kissability number, number 10. I don't know why there's a number associated with it because there's really only one flavor that I can tell. I found this on Sephora under the lip oil and balm and treatments. So it's not under lip gloss. If you're looking for it, that's where you won't find it. So I guess they're marketing it as more of a lip balm. This only has a three month shelf life, which is by far the shortest shelf life of all the glosses I'm about to show you. So if you know you're gonna use up a lip oil, I say go for it. This component is faux glass. It is a frosted plastic, really thick, quite weighty, has a pretty narrow valve in there so I can pick up product and not a lot of it is coming out. It has that tapered doe foot. I know that this is very popular with a little um, point at the top so you can get precise nourishment. I would say the scent is medium present. Won't knock you off, but it's definitely there. It is mostly a coconut scent, which I would expect from something called a 
what is it? Recover Hydrating Coconut Oil. This is 29 US dollars, bought it at Sephora. The scent is also very yummy. I would say that it's similar to the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I should do a whole video on just coconut products. I'm on it. I'm on it. There's a hint of pina colada, like maybe a touch of pineapple. So it's kind of tropical, but mostly coconut. It's not like a coconut milk or cream that's very like creamy and cozy. This one has a little spike of citrus. So I really enjoy this. It kind of perks you up. It has that main coconut scent and I love it. It does feel like a lip oil. It gives me actually quite a bit of shine. It feels nourishing on the lips. This is made in Canada. I can't confirm if it's cruelty free or not. I think it's very similar to the Kosas lip oil as well but this one has a more desirable scent. I also like the doe foot ap applicator. The only downside to this is that it has a much shorter shelf life, $29. Next tied with 0.18 fluid ounces of product is the Glossier lip gloss in clear. And then <laughs> something else that happened is that I can't find the original gloss that I was talking about. So this is standing in. I apologize, I really am sorry, but you will get to see the swatches as is like I I kept that portion so you'll actually see how it looks on the lips so please bear with me but this is this came in the same but this came in the same set as the other confetti shade this is fussy in her gloss balm like five balms five balms I want to say balm and balm at the same time five glosses in the holiday collection this is her pink kind of nudie universal or universal shade this is her pink kind of nudie universal shade, but they both have the same amount of product. This is why it's so important to show because they look absolutely completely different. Um, we'll talk about the Glossier one first. This one has a slight pink tint to it. So it does have like red lake and red six pigment. What I do enjoy about it having a little bit of pigment is that it doesn't wash you out. If you have put the gloss on over like a red lip or something and it picks up a little bit of the red pigment and then starts to mix in and it gets muddy. I like that that kind of hides the fact so you don't just like get to near the bottom of this and think it's a disgusting like bio lab mess. It's very thick and goopy. I will say this is like 90s, 2000s at its best. Has that double-sided dough foot applicator, so you actually get quite a bit of product on it. The tip is actually pretty precise as well. This was made in Canada, certified cruelty-free, six-month shelf life. I've had this for maybe two years. <laughs> the jojoba seed oil is in the middle of their list of ingredients. They have fragrance right near the bottom, and from what I have learned, fragrance can hide a bevy of unknown ingredients. It does have a slight scent to it, very minimal to low scent. Slightly mint chocolate smell. It doesn't feel minty on the lips and doesn't have like a true vanilla or chocolate scent. So it's not really gourmand, almost a chapstick flavor from my childhood. Non-offensive, goes away the minute you put it on. If you like a high glass shine, so I'm talking like MAC lip glass level of shine, it just totally glosses over any kind of fine lines on your lips and it stays for a long time. You do have to reapply during the day, especially after a meal, but I would say maybe like five hour wear, you know, for like high glass shine. It does feel like you're wearing lip gloss. Like it doesn't just like, oh, it melts away. But I like it because it's like wearing jeans with no stretch. It's like, you know you're wearing jeans and there's a little bit of discomfort, but it also tells you that you're wearing jeans. Does that make sense? So I love, love, love this formula and I think it's the most unoffensive formula in so many ways. There's no like horror from this gloss. It's just very thick. I also love the small component. I love it when they're kind of like symmetrical split down the center because then I can have like a lot of um, room to hold this and have a lot of control. Whereas let's say the Fenty, which I'm getting to right next, is very chunky. I do like that it has like sides to it so that I can also hold it really well. So they, they did keep that in mind. And this has a much lower center of gravity, so it sits much better. But I like that these two can fit in your purse very well and they, you know, kept usability in mind. All right, Fenty, Fenty, Fenty. This gloss came in that holiday set that I mentioned. 
it was $42 for five minis, meaning it was under $8 per mini, I think. Math. Great, great, great price. I even got this for like, I think 20 something dollars for the entire set. These were completely worth it if you can get a set. Um, I know that her normal gloss bombs, uh, gloss bombs are taller and actually have a lot of product. It takes a while to get through them. Again, the shade that I'm showing you is fussy, but don't be fooled. The one that I actually wanted to tell you about is called Confetti, which has more of a holographic shimmer to it. So that one has a blue and pink shimmer, maybe a little bit of cloudiness. It feels really milky inside. It's not, it's not on Sephora's site as like a single item that you can buy, I apologize, but her Diamond Milk is very similar. I think Diamond Milk has mostly silver, true silver or white reflex, so that can really cover a whole array of skin tones and makeup looks and undertones. What I liked about Confetti though is that the blue and the pink actually, with a holographic, you know, shift, it makes the lips look really plump. So that amount of shimmer was perfect to me, and then the color of the shimmer also, even though it made it more cool toned, so I wouldn't use it as much for every single look that I have, like maybe on this kind of eye look day, I wouldn't use like a that kind of, ah, the rules are off. This was made in USA, cruelty free, and has a 12 month or one year shelf life. The stopper valve is quite large, so I do pull out a lot of product. Like if I close and then reopen it one more time, like you get a trail, like a pizza hot cheese trail that you have to like kind of be careful to cup back onto the applicator with because look at how much. It's like nail polish mountain all over again. The scent is medium to robust. Like I would say it's pretty forward. They describe this as like a peachy vanilla scent. Honestly, that's not what I would have gotten to just by like just using my mortal unrefined nose. Truffle, blue cheese, pineapple. It is kind of a hybrid juicy fruit, but a little bit of vanilla in there. I know this is going to be a very unpopular opinion, but this isn't my favorite scent. And it's just too strong for me to wear on my lips because I smell it throughout the day. I eat it and then I taste it and it's too much. It's like having a deodorant or like when you get perfume, you spray perfume, you get it on your fingers and somehow it gets into your mouth and you're like eating it almost. Oh my God, it's like that. So if you like this flavor, and I highly recommend you going in to smell it because every single gloss of hers, no matter what color, smells like this. If you can stand it and you love it, you know, this is, this is a ride or die gloss. It really is one of the best formulations I have ever tried. It stays on really well, it gives you the shine, and it lasts throughout the day. It also makes your lips more plump looking. They aren't goopy or glossy. They don't have that like super glass shine, but they're very shine forward. And the, sh the shimmers in here, the, the little pearlescence, the mix, like it's perfect. It's a perfect gloss, except for the smell. Also tied for next amount of product at 0.15 fluid ounces is the Pat McGrath for a Lust lip gloss and then the Kosas wet lip oil in Jellyfish. This is in nude negligee. Let's talk about Pat McGrath Labs first because this was one of my OG lip glosses. Not exactly the shade because I've gone through so many tubes like in both the astral shines and all of the like blitz golds, whatever. I bought this off of her website you can't get it on Sephora, this exact shade, but she does not have a true clear gloss shade. Doesn't this just look like the perfect ballet pink? I find that it doesn't settle into your like fine lines and doesn't make those like white bars or stripes. The smell. Okay, so the smell is, if I was calling medium to forward like five to 10, and I think Fenty sits between around seven, I would say that this from five to barely there, zero, is more at a four so it's detectable but it's not like so strong it's very yummy this is not a vanilla scent but it's maybe a marshmallow vanilla cake scent not too cakey it feels like a very pure scent it's not like a lot of desserts all together in a room 
it's like one pure scent. Angel food cake, kind of airy, it doesn't like weigh you down with too much vanilla. More marshmallowy, a little bit more like sugar forward. If you do love this formula, stay away from her Opulist glosses, her most recent gl gloss release. Too much glitter. I could barely understand where my lips were on my face. That's a look that you can rock if you need a look like that. But for everyday wear, like her Blitz Astrals are perfectly wearable and beautiful and they make your lips look plump, whereas those were straight up glitter and I just, I couldn't handle it. From what I can tell, there's a lot of ingredients in here and none of them are recognizable to me as like a vitamin E or a jojoba oil or any kind of like pressed fruit or seed oils. So I won't say that this is like the most nourishing or good for you ingredients. It's not a clean or certified clean uh, product. It is made in the USA. I can't confirm that it's cruelty free either and it has an 18 month shelf life. I've gotten down to a couple tubes where like right at the very end it just goes a little rancid and I can smell it. It's not necessarily a bad thing because then I can tell when I should toss it. But if you're really into the clean beauty space, not my top pick. It lasts throughout the day, definitely not as thick as the gloss balm, can go on really sheer, you can layer it up. This doe foot holds a lot of product and it's very soft and pillowy on the lips, it's just a joy to use, very ergonomic, slightly tapered, slightly angled, and it's just a one-sider. I would not flip it over and use the other side. It just feels really comfortable on the lips and it's not sticky. I love this. If you are into clean beauty, I know you've seen this. This is the Kosas Lip Oil in Jellyfish, I think it was so smart that they, they tinted it a little bit and then it, they also gave it like a little bit of a haziness and then called it Jellyfish. It's like the perfect color for Jellyfish. You get a really narrow valve, but the product does kind of ball up at the tip here. It has more of a concave applicator. The doe foot is also very tapered and super tiny, which makes sense for her other shades like Jaws, the bright red, that one really needs a precise application. The scent is also in the Pat McGrath range that it's more of a three or four, not super forward. I would say that it's like definitely more fruity. It has like a subtlety to it, not just like a boom, citrus. It has more of a mixed fruit cocktail smell, maybe a hint of vanilla, so like more of a dreamsicle. I like it, it's not my favorite. Oh, this component though. This is $27, Pat McGrath is $28, Kosas is $27. So with the same amount of product, they actually are very comparable. So if you're always like, I can't afford Pet McGrath Labs, you know, if you're gonna afford one of these, you, you probably could afford this for $1 more. But this is one of my favorite components because again, like it stands pretty well. You can pop it into your purse or pocket and the top just looks like a little toy or like I'm back in the um, 80s Miami. It also clicks, which has great haptic feedback to know that it's actually closed. This is 18, month shelf life, made in the USA, can't confirm if it's cruelty free. Definitely a lip oil, definitely more conditioning, it has some good call out ingredients, gives you reasonable shine. I think it makes your lips look really healthy and plump and I like how it wears throughout the day. It definitely kind of like soaks into your lips so then you have to reapply maybe a three to five hour wear, but I like it. I will never buy it again. This is kind of lower on my totem pole because it's so expensive. In penultimate place for the amount of product that you will get in a tube is the Tower 28 Magic Lip Gloss. It's called like Shine On Lip Jelly or something like that. Resin component overprinted in this hot orange and then a little sunrise on the cap. When they list everything on the bottom here on this little purple tab, I can't read how many months this will last. So I can't tell you the shelf life of this because it is too tiny for print. This has one of the least resistant valves. It really just kind of pulls right out. There's no resistance. So you get a lot of product on the double-sided doe foot. Probably one of my least favorite scents of the bunch. It has a hint of chemical smell and I don't know where that's coming from. A smorgasbord of tasty things, a little bit of almond, a little bit of fruit, also not too vanilla-y. Apricot kernel oil, raspberry seed oil, and rosehip oil. So that is already wonderful. And those are very high up on the ingredient list. This is a POC owned brand by Amy Lou. Made in USA, clean, non-toxic, and vegan. Quite affordable for a Sephora product. It is $14. I I don't like this as much as I like this. Like I reach for this every time 
over this. Even though I love the little shimmer, I do think that it adds a little plumping. It lasts pretty well throughout the day. They have similar amount of shine, similar amount of like wearability. If you're looking for something affordable instead of this, I would, I would definitely spring for this and try it out in a color that you love. You get more product here and less here. Finally, here's a product that you cannot get at Sephora as of now. Also a POC owned brand. This is by Michelle Fon, a YouTuber extraordinaire. She launched M Cosmetics and um, I think that's been like a really viral indie brand. 0.11 fluid ounces, made in Italy, vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free. It has maybe half the amount of ingredients than this does. Vitamin E as an ingredient. It does kind of like kickback. This has like a beautiful little frosted boat glass moment. Gold inlay cap. I think that's really luxe looking. And then her um, signature geode kind of blind embossed on the top. Double-sided applicator. And this is one of my favorite scents ever. Oh, it's in the five range. It's definitely medium maybe five to six, pretty pretty present. True campfire s'mores, not even gonna be like apologetic about it. It's like, yes, you want campfire? I'll give it to you, girl. It's $20. This is one of my favorite glosses ever. There's like a little bit of graham cracker smell even. Like it's just so true to a s'more. You know, it's not breaking the $20 range, which anything above $20, I already expect to be bomb. So this is still in the high-end range, but it's not like a luxury product. Oh, this cap has like a little bit of a soft touch, amazing clingy vinyl to the outside. So it feels like a soft touch credit card or maybe one of those like silicone phone cases that you get that looks kind of like jelly. That's, that's great. Cause then you get a little bit of grip. Wow, the shine is there. The wearability is long. If we're gonna get into the rankings, let's just get into it, right? This is my favorite gloss for the price for $20. I know I get only 0.11 ounces, 36 months. So this can last you three years. Next would be my Glossier. It's just such a favorite of mine. It doesn't give me like the same scent payoff, but the glassy shine just makes me feel really confident and cool when I walk into a room or walk into my bedroom. This is $14, this Glossier one. This is also $14, the Tower 28. Um, but you get more product here. Next, I would tie these two. This has a lot of really smart design. Tells me about the brand. She has a lot of like matchsticks are in this shape. All her cheek products are in these hexagon shapes. And I just think that it's such a strong design sense. Really, if you look at this component, the indicator are these like flimsy little stickers. Gorgeous, they're embossed, they're offset. Like it's nice, but they do fall off eventually. Like I could just pick this off right now and you wouldn't know that this was a Pat McGrath gloss. Whereas Fenty, I think her design design and research is just phenomenal. Addresses the fact that we all have very different lip shapes and lip sizes because I would be pissed if I had billowy, lovely, luscious lips and it would take me a few times to like dip back in. Whereas this, so smart. This, you even get more product in it. And this is even her mini size, both black owned beauty brands. Lastly, these two. I would use this up happily and then just never repurchase, but I would keep the component because it's so cute and really innovative. So architectural. This to me is way more tweeny. Probably won't pick up the other shades. So I wanted to include this. I think it's a great lip oil. I need to use it up real quickly. I love the smell. It seems nourishing. And I think it just sort of stands off as like not a gloss. Put it on almost as skincare gloss. I don't love the price, $29. But what do you expect from Mark? Nothing less. Oh, my bra strap was just hanging out. You gotta let me know. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was enjoyable, informative. I hope this helped you make a anti-haul decision, a purchasing decision, or gave you just something to listen to whilst you were getting ready throughout the day. I hope this kind of content kind of invigorates you during these times. It can seem very frivolous to go through products or like, it's like I'm on a QVC channel, <laughs> but my philosophy is use what you got, you know, and love what you got and do what you can with what you have. I am not a minimalist by any stretch. Love shopping, love figuring out what brands are trying to say. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or a triple thumbs up. Tell me down below in the comments what your favorite clear lip gloss is and recommend any other glosses that I should pick up. Again, I'm trying to buy more glosses with clean ingredients or non-toxic ones that are cruelty free. I am living for clear glosses, but if you have a recommendation for a colorful one or a tinted balm, I'd be down. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. This is Diana Chu. I'm an artist and illustrator out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can follow me at slowgaze on Instagram and I'll see you on the next video. Adios.